So uh, welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. And um, we are continuing with our ongoing sort of conversation about what different people are doing in different places. Um, let's do quick in introductions um, by people, I mean, teachers and students. So glad that uh, Rohan and Aditya are with us. You guys want to start with introductions and we'll go counterclockwise around that way, um, if you don't mind. Aditya, you're first. Hello, my name is Aditya. I'm a student at William Mannon. And uh, um, some ways that we, and Ro me and Rohan, are working on a project about AI, uh, ethical ways to use AI for um, the state comp for the T Technology Student Association state competition. Hmm. Good, good. Welcome. And we'll get back to you. Rohan. Hello. Um, hi, my name is Rohan and um, I'm using AI um, to help me with my, um, to help me uh, sharpen my uh, essays in language arts. And, and um, I'm doing a project on the ethical uses of AI with Aditya. Cool. I'm Paul Allison and I get to work with these guys once in a while. Um, uh, we we just set up um, uh, think like a monk, right? Um, and you guys started reading that, and believe it or not, you're gonna we're gonna go into AI, and so so that's the kind of thing I like to do. It's fun um, to work with teachers from all over the place. So Chris Sloan is one of those teachers. Hi, Chris. Hello. Yeah, my name is Chris Sloan, and I teach uh, English and photography and media production in Salt Lake City, Utah, in a high school. And you're what three weeks or three and a half weeks into the synthesis project? Is that right? Yeah, and now my students are doing um, uh, what's called a synthesis essay, where you synthesize sources, and uh, you know we're integrating some AI um, thinking partners to help with their writing. Cool, cool. David. All right. Um, my name is David Cole. I'm uh, usually based in California. Right now, I'm on the East Coast in the Montreal, where there's no winter here whatsoever. It's raining here. And uh, I uh, was a former English teacher for many years, and I worked in technology and literacy and worked with a writing project on a bunch of different technology integration projects. And when AI um, hit a, showed up in our lives and our browsers, I reached out to the writing project folks and reconnected with Paul and many of you. So I'm exploring AI and I'm benefiting from all of your thinking and some of Paul's thinking partners, too. Debbie, good to see you again. Hi, I'm Debbie, and I'm in the sunny part of California right now. And um, my company is has actually been looking at ways to use AI, but um, we are currently um, have in within the software the ability to cite AI in Chicago and LA and APA. And what we're saying basically to teachers at this point is you may have a variety of ways that students are using AI. But if you cite your sources, that really is what uh, the conversation should be about, not about banning it, not about um, uh, whatever those other things are. So I'm very interested in what people are doing with AI. And I'm about to meet with a group of eight district administrators that are li that administer large libraries in public school districts. And we're going to have the conversation about what does a good AI policy look like hmm. to be interesting. Wow. Cool. Can't wait to learn more from you. Your company is? Noodle tool. Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Just <laughs> didn't want to make it a mystery. Or anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's okay. Um, and and you were a, a librarian for many years. Is that? Um, I I have been a librarian. I still you identify still as a librarian. Okay. Cool, cool. I'd love to hear what you all come up with. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and and maybe we can think about that together. Andrea, are you there? You were there. Oh, there you are. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm here. I just don't know what happened to my camera. It turned itself okay. off, and I can't make it come back. So hi, I'm Andrea. And uh, I work in Michigan, in Oakland County. I work for our intermediate school district, so I serve all 250,000 students here in Oakland County. I just found out it's like one-tenth of Michigan's population. Isn't that wild? 
<laughs> like comes to school here. Anywho, um, uh, my role is a learning design consultant and I am leading a lot of work around people, uh, exactly what Adita and Rohan were saying about ethical use. And so I have a bunch of kids and teachers coming together tomorrow for us to come up with what we think. Um, so I'm excited to learn from all of you today. Say, say more about what do you mean, what we think? You mean what we think, what we about, think about, about what we think about ethical use and what we think about the power of these tools. And I just was in a webinar with um, like really smart people and they, <laughs> one of them said, the smartest well, thank thing you for coming said. here too. I appreciate it. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> no, no, no. These I, people were just, we're just like, teasing. wow, but oh, not as smart really as you smart. all. Um, no. But the, this one dude well said, played, um, Andrea. Well played. I know, I know. Um, this one dude said, when you make a new technology, you make new responsibilities. And I just oh, thought that was like the, yeah. the most succinct way to come up with how this is. Um, so they were also all, I think maybe I thought they were really smart because they were all from like overseas and they had really great accents. Um, and they are <laughs> not kidding about the weather in Ireland and in England. They really do want to talk about it all the time. Oh. So, cool, cool. Uh, Listen, we, um, that toggle down there, one thing I noticed is that there's a little arrow next to the camera thing. And sometimes yeah. you have to go up and choose the, the camera that you want to come on. It's I know, I had it problem. on, and it's just like uh, not letting me choose my, I only have one but camera. So. Also, if you go out and come back, we won't say anything. We'll, okay, I'll we'll just be quiet. Anywhere. I might leave and come back. <laughs> Thank you. Because okay. we'd love to see your face. Right. Bonnie, welcome. Hi, everybody. Just stopping through from Philadelphia. Um, I am an English language arts classroom teacher. I'm also a part of the um, National Writing Projects Digital Discourse Team and uh, in connection with University of Pennsylvania. Um, so I do a lot uh, in the classroom. We are using AI in various ways. Um, and for various reasons. Um, right now, um, I, I just returned to the classroom um, after a half year sabbatical. So with that in mind, um, I'm on a rush through <laughs> in a playground with students um, using uh, digital discourse tools um, through Now Comment and Youth Voices. So I feel like we're running a race here right now. Well, and, and I my they, they, they are seniors in their last three months of school too. So it's like, you're very brave to ask them to do something new <laughs> at this point, it seems to me. But it's great that you're doing it. Yeah. But but Bonnie, I got to say, I, I found some of those dissertation pages that you are experimenting with. Um, yeah. He has them all private, but I went in and snooped. Um, that you were experimenting with uh, some of the thinking partners and fascinating work you're doing there, I got to say. I, oh, anyway, thank you. yeah, cool, cool. Yeah, so I'm glad you snuck in because I said, well, I can make them private, but Paul can come into anything, so I don't have to worry about that. And he can help guide me do the right things um, or just looking at how I can interact with it at that level of academic learning too. Cool. Okay. So Rohan has his hand up. <laughs> and so we're going to throw, maybe David, do you want to start by asking Aditya that question again? Yeah, I'm I want to go back. We, we yeah, 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 we can ask that, Aditya, are Aditya. you there? Yeah. Okay. Aditya, I see your name there. Uh, there you were, you yeah. were about, before we started recording, you were starting to explain that you were using another service, maybe Bing, to quickly make a worksheet. And I wanted to ask a just get down in the weeds a bit. What was the what was the test? What was the class? What how did you structure the prompts to get the worksheet? How effective was it in terms of what you needed and how you were able to work with it? Yeah, so uh, it was an it was part of my English class. So this is uh -huh. definitely Mr. Donsky's class where I've been doing all the AI stuff. But yep. um, it was a test on how to use commas properly. Okay. And so what I did is <laughs> I went in and asked 
hi, uh, so what I did is I put in, um, can you please create a, something along the lines of, can you please create a worksheet to help an eighth grade student with the following, uh, with the, to, under, to, under, to practice the following rules on comma usage? And then I, there was like a sheet in Google Classroom, like a Google Doc with all yep. the rules on how to use commas properly. Uh -huh. so I copied and pasted it in, and then it gave me uh, a small worksheet with an answer key below. So I, I answered it, and then I had um, Rohan well, uh, go and check the answers against the answer key that the AI was giving me, yep. and he graded how I did on the work. Nice. And how'd you do? Uh, that's pretty good. Um, nice. That's great. It worked. So you use that as a worksheet to take the test. And I, David, are you asking how did you do on the actual test? Is no, I was curious to just just you, the worksheet, the drill, oh, just like the, the extent okay, to which. Got it. Yeah, I mean the fact that you. One thing I'm always struck by with the AI, AI stuff is that it works best. I'm finding when you do a lot of pre work, like when you gather the materials you're curious about, and in that process you inform yourself of certain attributes on the material you're looking at and listening to what you're saying, Aditya. You know, you went and say you got the key, you got the sample things, you got the Google Doc, you put it all together, and then you had a nice sheet, then you use the sheet. It's a lot of steps where you're committing yourself to the yeah. story of comma usage, which is awesome in that way. Yeah. yeah. So was it helpful? Was it more helpful than like sitting down with Rohan in the cafeteria or whatever else you would have done before AI? <laughs> yeah, I think it was helpful. We took the test today. Yeah. So I think I did pretty well. Uh, AI definitely okay. helped. Like the test felt almost eerily similar to what the AI was giving me. And, Go figure. <laughs> yeah, and uh, one thing that we did is to keep in mind when using Bing Chat specifically, is that they have like three different presets. Like I think in now common, it's like the temperature, how creative, yeah. versus how informative versus how yeah. informative. So if you keep it at like the middle, the standard, which is like uh, not quite which is going to be interesting, but not quite the most, um, which is, it's the middle of the road option. It yeah. has a key limit of 2000. So what you have to do is you have to slide it over to the more creative preset. So that's like, I'm not sure which one would it be turning the temperature up or down and now comment. And then yeah. it gives you a higher character count, which basically yeah. made the whole thing possible because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to fit in the entire like rule sheet in the I see. So temperature was really related to number of characters. It isn't sort of the nature or the wackiness or yeah. lack of wackiness of the text. Yeah. Okay. So Didi, one of one of the questions that um, has been asked is when students come off of now comment or youth voices or whatever, to where they are building their own thinking partners, do they then use those tools like Bing and so forth? in a different way because of what they learned there. And I think it could become, it could go back and forth. Maybe some stuff you're learning on Bing can come into how you build a thinking partner, right? Yeah, Is I that... think, I feel like that's sort of accurate in the way that if I already have a purpose-built thinking partner or something that I'm gonna, I, need, I need to know what I'm gonna do often, like for example, with the debate thing, mm -hmm. I would rather create a thinking partner for that because I know I'm gonna need to do that over and over and over again. And I know that trying to create that in a single Bing chat window and then it'd have to like copy and paste it and keep it in like a Google doc and all that stuff would end up becoming more complicated than all storing it on now comment. But on the mm. other end of that spectrum, it's like when you're doing something quick, like creating a quick worksheet and then it's going to only be used for this one test and you're never really going to sure. end up touching it for like maybe a year or two, then mm -hmm. there's not as much reason to create a whole purpose built thinking partner, which I feel is a more intensive process than just like putting in a line or two into Bing chat and calling it a day. Boy, those are, those are nice use cases. That, yeah, that's great, Aditya. Thank you so much for that feedback. Uh, mm. Feel free to keep interrupting the way I just did and asking questions of these guys as we get going here. Um, Terry, you want to introduce yourself and tell us how very, I, I mean, you could go extensively, but quickly what you've been messing with AI on. It's been pretty impressive, but yeah. Um, well, <clears throat> Say who you are first. I'm uh, Terry Elliott. I live in uh, um, cave country yeah. in, in Kentucky. And um, what I've been using, I've been using it for poetry, especially. Um, 
of course, I, I had uh, Chat GPT do a bill of materials for me for a shed that I wanted built. Pretty good, pretty helpful. Uh, really? But, but for poetry, it's been the most interesting of all. Um, I, I ask it re ask uh, regularly. I so I think of um, I think of the big the big chat uh, programs as my thinking partners, which I think uh, now Comet is is really got a better has got a better uh, handle on it and make these thinking partners a little bit smaller. And of course, I'd, what I'd love to have is a thinking partner that is totally personalized you know, my own personalized library that came not, that came from my own writing and the writing that I'm reading and all the, uh, the personal knowledge uh, sources that I have. But with poetry, it's been so much fun to get, uh, get another take on my poetry from the uh, chat programs. And I saw you do that with perplexity, right? Yeah. Perplexity is a very interesting uh, uh, tool to use. Um, and it's it's I don't really know how to describe it. It's a, quite a bit different than than the, it's, a, it's not as straightforward as the others, uh, yeah, yeah. the other tools. Uh, maybe somebody else can talk more about. So, Terry, Terry, we were doing just quick introductions, and we maybe we can circle back to you. Maybe yeah, that's um, fine. yeah, yeah. I just wanted to let you know that. And and we had promised or, or asked Rohan and Aditya to start us off with a project they're working on. And I want to ask you all, I don't want to be interviewing them and dragging them like information. Out. Please get involved in the conversation and give these guys feedback. So what project are you working on and what do you want to show us and have us help you think through a little bit? Not that you are on the spot with anything, but whatever you'd like to say. Rohan, can we throw it to you? Is that? Yeah. Uh, so, should I like, explain the project? Yeah. So, um, me and Aditya are given a project um, that we have to make a, uh, um, an like a a, uh, a series of four vlogs about the ethical uses of AI. Minimum run time is six minutes. So, combined, they'll have to be a total of six minutes, like around one and a half minute each per. Oh. And then who, did, together? who gave you this assignment? Yeah. So it wasn't really a school assignment or anything. So we're both part of the school's engineering club. And every every year we go to a state conference. But uh, this year, unfortunately, due to the spring break timing, we weren't able to attend the conference because it's like during, because we have a more unique spring break than other schools. So what we ended up having to do is where there's different kinds of projects. So some projects can be completed com uh, before the conference and some have to be done at the conference or a part of it. So this was one of the pre-conference options that they gave us is create a vlog series. So we decided, you know, why not? Let's just do it. And it would be really cool. Like obviously we're doing stuff with AI like over here. And we, was like, and we thought that it would be very applicable to that. And we kind of made our decision on which project we're going to do based on that. And we're also doing other projects for the state competition. However, none of them really involve the use of AI. Yes. Yeah, so tell us more about this. What do you, how'd you get started? What are you thinking about? So we haven't really done too much because we have, uh, again, those other projects that are non AI related that we've also been working on, but we have done some preliminary research and by we, I mean, Rohan credit goes completely to him, uh, but he can share the doc with you or Rohan, do you want me to share the doc? Uh, sure. Okay, well, what's it titled? Ethical Uses of AI. Yeah, I see it. Okay, that, that's that's pretty thorough. You did a good job while that was... We, we can't see it yet, you know. Yeah, I'm just... You didn't just... share. Okay, you got new ones. I'm going to ask you to share. So, go ahead. Yeah. So had a little introduction. Uh, obviously, this is all like a draft, but Rohan, mm -hmm. since it's mostly your stuff, why don't you go through it? Rohan, you're, you're muted. Sorry. Okay. There you, uh, go. There you go. Yeah. Artificial, artificial intelligence is the technology of today's age. Uh, it, can, it can be a mastermind. It's a powerful tool, but, but it can also be a formidable flow. 
Um, artificial intelligence uh, can be used in, in many ways, many ethical ways, but also in devastating ways. So um, let's talk about the ethical uses of AI. I'm going to jump in and ask. Yeah, please. Go ahead. So what is the goal, overall goal, of your presentation besides just bum rushing the people with the title? Because the <laughs> title is going to blow the roof off of people. So what, what goal do you expect to reach by making this sort of project presentation? So our goal here is to kind of like, this is obviously an extremely new technology. Many people don't really understand. I would say it's like very like shade, it's, there's not really like a clearly defined way to use it, way to not use it. Like the calculator has been around for a long time and there's like, obviously like we understand when to use a calculator, when to not use a calculator. Like we have calculator and non-calculator sections on math tests. Mm -hmm. So, and AI is obviously much more powerful, much more versatile than the simple calculator. Mm -hmm. But right now there's not really like a set of guidelines for ethical uses of AI in schools. And we want to kind of help and in, in addition to kind of inspiring the, um, in addition to like almost inspiring people who might want to create those set of guidelines, like help school administrators and other people who might end up seeing this project and might want to figure out like where to, where exactly should we draw the line? Okay. Or but, if they should draw a line at all. So would you want them to draw a line knowing what you know about AI and its use? in your classroom and in your life? I think that there are definitely situations in which I say that the way some kids are using AI is definitely not okay. Like I once, we had, we had to like once do a presentation which was like a fictitious conversation between two historical figures. And I know someone who just used AI for the entire thing. He just copied and pasted in from whatever chat GPT gave him. And in my opinion, at least, I think that you should, that it's one thing to use AI to kind of help enhance your project mm -hmm. kind of help inspire your project. It's another thing entirely to just tell ChatGPT to make everything up. Yes. Yes. I believe that too. Debbie, so, can I, can I put you on the spot? Ask, Sorry, do, go ahead. Does, do you know what grade the child, the, your peer got for that kind of assignment? If you mm -hmm. knew, do you think that your teacher knew too? that it was a copy and paste job? I'm not exactly sure what grade he got. All I know is that I did not exactly get the best grade on that project because like a small 10 point assignment. Uh, I know this, I think he got a better grade than me to be honest. Okay. But I don't know if the teacher was able to discern whether or not it's AI. Okay. I also think that from a teacher's point of view, there also needs to be some ethics. Like I think there was a story a while back mm -hmm. of and this is, this is just popping in my head. There was a story a while back of some, I think it was in Texas, some university professor just put every kid's final exam, like it was like a 20 student class into AI and whether or not, a, and if AI claimed the work was done by AI, then, then they would just get a zero for that and they would fail and they wouldn't be able to graduate on time. Whoa. And I think lots of kids, ChatGPT ended up claiming a lot of the essays, even if they weren't actually written of like the few essays that it claimed, only one of them was actually written by ChatGPT. Mm. And there is evidence to back this up. I don't remember exactly which book, but I remember ChatGPT claimed to write a book once. And so I think that there definitely needs to also be somewhere like, um, obviously this requires like a great deal of honesty, like telling your teacher honestly whether you used AI or not. But also I, I don't think we can just take one thing and call it like a day. Like I think that it was in incredibly unjust what happened to those students, those university students in that case, where ChatGPT falsely claimed that it, it wrote the essays and now they were, and, and they barely were able to graduate on time. It like, they had to like complain to the um, administration of the school. And that kind of situation should never happen to anybody. But in addition, I don't think the first situation should happen to anybody to happen to any teacher either, where like many students have used AI to just complete the assignment that you, put effort and thought into like it was a it was a very fun project for me i think that 
it's not right to the teacher either. Mm-hmm. So Aditya and, and Rohan, I, I want to make a production note there <laughs> that mm-hmm. one of the things you just said is that ethical use of AI, mm-hmm. um, students have ethical uses, teachers have ethical uses, mm-hmm. right? So maybe these, these vlogs could have different aspects of like who's using the AI. Mm-hmm. I think that would be a great idea. Uh, Rohan, just um, can you note that down real quick in the doc? I'll stop sharing. <laughs> I was also wondering yeah. along that same lines, have you come across the AI Bill of Rights uh, that the White House put out at all in your research? Is that one of your sources you were looking at? Uh, I haven't looked at that yet. Yeah, they there was a college professor who redid it for rights of students and educators too. Mm-hmm. And it really hits on, I'll see if I can dig it out here in a minute, but it really hits on what you're lifting, which is that students should have a right to know if they're being evaluated by AI and the opportunity to opt out of those things. Mm. And, and also students have, should have some transparency as well if they're using AI and that we kind of all agree as a community of learners including your teachers, that we're going to be really transparent about it and cite it and explain how we used it. And that's a really crucial piece of this conversation. So you might like, you might find it really helpful uh, to your work because of how they set that all up for you. So when, when Andrea finds that, I'll send it to you guys. Um, okay. No thought, right? no <laughs> so I'll email it to you. Oh, I'll just I, pop I, it in the, in the chat for you, Paul. Is that the best? Yeah, I think I think I found it, but you can, Andrew can validate and I just got to figure out how to get it. Oh, hi, Bob. Um, Sorry. The other thing I would say uh, is that you both use AI ethically, and I I hope some of your talk is about how some of the ways you've all been using it. I I understand it can't be all about you, but I would uh, hope for personal anecdote because you both are, you know, doing it the right way. Have you thought about that? Yeah, good. But uh, also, I think that that was kind of the plan from the beginning include ways where you should not use AI, include ways where you should use AI. Oh, uh, thank you. I'll just look at this. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think include ways where you don't use AI, include ways where you should use AI, and uh, maybe even like what, what I just said right now with the teachers, what if we, I was thinking, Rohan, why don't we include that? That might end up being something that could be helpful. Yeah. Um. Actually, I have a couple of interesting pieces that may be interesting to you. The first is, is that ethical use of information was around a long time before AI became the central issue. And when you think about it, for example, there are situations where people who we consider artists have actually Um, been uh, criticized because what people thought they did was simply copy other people. And um, the line between copying and creating um, isn't so clear. So when you look at an Andy Warhol can of soup, you could say, oh, he's just copied that can of soup. But other people would say, well, he is creating something when he puts that image within a painting and he's making a comment about um, what what should be art and what should be considered art and what shouldn't. So that's one thing I think you have to think about is that it's not going to be a clear line. And another thing that I think you have to think about is When a teacher gives you an assignment, and I think you are both very well aware of it, and your example of the person who copied and just gave gave the AI responses the answer to the assignment, that was a clear example of where that person didn't learn anything or didn't learn much of anything. Maybe that person would say, well, I did learn how to write a good prompt for AI to get that kind of response. But that person did not learn what the teacher's intention was, which was, for example, if I were to say to you, I want you to read this and summarize it, my intention is that you are 
going to learn to summarize better by struggling with reading and understanding and then summarizing. But if my purpose of my assignment is not for you to summarize and you need some help, getting help summarizing something that say has a lot of vocabulary you don't know or in a subject you don't know a lot about, then AI becomes a handmaiden to help you learn what you need to learn in simpler language so that you can do what the teacher actually wanted you to do, which was maybe to participate in the debate. So really, there are, there are little nuances here around ethical use that are not so obvious. I think one good point that I think is important about that ethical use is that you're transparent about what you've done. Um, for example, there are some there's a contest called National History Day where the students write a process paper, which is not the history that they learned, but the process of what they did. It and seems you're an evaluator of those, are you not? Yeah. Yeah. And it seems cool. to me that kind of a transparent thing where you say, I did this because this is what I did and this is how I did it and this is how I arrived at it, showing your thinking, showing your process is a way for you to be honest and ethical about the kind of use you made of AI, which could be anything from summarizing to drawing a Campbell soup can. I want to check back with Rowan and Aditya. What are you guys thinking? I want to give you three more minutes, and then we're going to move on to something else, if that's OK. But yeah. I 100%, I 100% agree with that. I think transparency is important. And I think if you're using it, like if you get prior permission, like uh, for example, if you ask, uh, I didn't actually end up doing this, but for I had a project where my I asked my teacher, can I like do some AI generated images? And he's like, okay, you uh, you can just as long as you film me, how, walk me through how you did it. <laughs> and I think that's exactly what you do. But I think the the the, the rules around that should be is be honest with your who you're uh, with the uh, with your teacher. Ask them for permission first. And then show them how you did it. And then maybe we'll, we'll all learn something in that case. That um that kind of ties into what I what I like what information I got from source eight source eight in my research. You can just tell us. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. It it was um the top ten ethical uh, AI practices to teach K to twelve students and um it had stuff about um be upfront and how he used it and understand what is cheating and what is not and like uh beware of an, an analyze for bias information so i want to i want to second say it and i would say it again what chris sloan just said earlier to you guys we are totally learning from you every week when you come share with us your workflow and your process right so it's good you're doing the research but we need to hear from you as young people who are using this stuff and you know teaching us that way. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I. What else did I want? So get cool. Oh, the other thing is, I I totally am interested in, like, those of us who are adults making these policies. Right. It makes me nervous. I'll, I'll go out on the edge and say this. It makes me nervous because, like, I, look, just watching what you guys are doing and what you're thinking mm -hmm. is teaching me what policies we need to have. And I don't want to make policies for you. I want to make, you know, runways for you to take off on. Right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. How can um, we? Can I yeah, echo that yeah. a little bit Please. too? So, so we, the the group I'm working with tomorrow, actually, uh, really was th thoughtful about not making policies as much as like what do we know is possible right now, and mm. instead and having conversations or like how, how do you negotiate the the conversations? Because if I suspect you use AI to like trick me then how do I enter into that conversation with you on either side of it for the student to say, did you use AI to, to 
assess me or from the other student side. Um, but some of the things I was putting in the chat is a squirrel back to their project for Adita and Rohan is, uh, since you're talking about engineering, it might be interesting to go down the rabbit hole of how these models are trained because the reasons that you have to watch out for bias and what it's giving us is because of the training data. The training data was biased. So anyone who's ever had to do any kind of training, any of these models, which like a way long time ago I did have to do this. It was, you have to be very careful what you put into that. And it's so, we don't know really what they've put in there. Um, so there's some like really interesting uh, podcasts that they were doing from the Mozilla Foundation on around this that I think would be fine for you two to listen to. It was very, very interesting what they were saying about it. The Mozilla and Foundation? from like an engineering perspective, that would be right there. <laughs> right. Chris, I, I'm giving you a heads up. Could we do a they say, I say little, you show us what you showed your students? And I show what how we made a thinking partner from it in in about three minutes as we wrap up with these guys. Yeah. Okay. Good. good. Okay. Hey, hey, Paul. So we're gonna we're gonna move on to something else, but let's um let's finish off with these. Yeah. Go ahead. Bob. I was just gonna say that the point. Andrew, Introduce yourself, Bob. I hi. we all know you, but not everyone may as they're listening. Hi, folks. Sorry to join late. I, I I'm Bob Montgomery from West Ed, and I'm just as excited as you are about the possibilities. And I just think Andrea's last point. I don't. I, I just don't want to brush that over because that the issue of how how our LLMs are being trained is pretty profound, and we risk in our enthusiasm just barreling ahead without really spending a minute um, actually being educated on that concern. And I think the implicit bias there we should we, we really should dedicate some time in this effort in the, in these conversations to trying to become more informed on that. I just want to echo Andrea that point, and I, I just felt like we kind of moved right on, and it didn't really resonate yet with the group, and I, I, I don't want to miss the opportunity. I have something to add to that, which is I remember I was in the call, I think, three or four weeks back when um, – and someone mentioned how they were using AI in a, a, a world language class where they used um, – where they took advantage of the fact that AI – can understand foreign languages to, so they were learning like descriptions, like how to describe uh, your, uh, your physical features. And what they did is they put that for that, uh, like a, a paragraph of just descriptions of yourself into AI. And what they ended up finding is that, I don't remember if it was the world language example specifically, but people put in like descriptions of themselves. And then what they ended up finding is that uh, the images tended to have a lighter, unless you specified, the images tended to have like a slightly lighter skin tone than, uh, they, they tended to skew towards a lighter skin tone unless you specifically mentioned that. And these are uh, third graders. This was Marina. Yeah. Her third graders. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I wonder though, I, I, I'll at least push back a little bit and think about when it comes up, I think we need to pay attention to it and fix yeah. it and be aware of it. I don't know how much, I, you know, I read about it all the time and everybody should be, I guess, but I don't know how much that could, I want people to use it and play with it. And when the biases come up, notice them and pay attention. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much, I don't, I don't want to like create courses about AI to learn about AI. I want to use, learn as we're using it. Is that is that a fair hope? Yes. I think it's a fair hope. And I just think if they're also work, I heard a little bit about engineering. So I'm just helping them be strategic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I think the re I think people say like, yes, of course, there's bias that comes up. But I also think that as we're talking about ethical usage, we have to be pushing these companies to be more transparent about how they train these models. Mm -hmm. be, like that's a part of the advocacy, the call to action, I think around AI as well. So. For sure. 
<laughs> so so can Chris and I show you something? I would <laughs> and, love and to. It's actually, and actually, um, Bonnie, we, we're using the thinking partner with you as well. So yeah. I will set this up. And Chris, you want to share your screen as I'm setting up and sure. So so I, I went to so here's here's the uh, perennial problem. On now comment, people pe and and look, is Terry still here? No, he jumped out. He's oh, sorry. This was actually a question that Terry Elliott asked years ago, which is we do all these amazing annotations on now comment on hypothesis on other platforms also. Like where do they go though, right? Mm -hmm. And as teachers, our experience has been that we um, that we we see all this rich conversation and meaningful interaction with the text that kids are doing. But then when we ask them to write the essay about that text, right, or a response to the text, they start from the, the beginning again, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that's been an interesting problem to deal with. Is that fair, Bonnie? Do you, yes. Okay. And Bonnie and I last spring did a, did a quick experiment where we copied all of the, you first sort, um, I'm doing this fast, buddy. Interrupt me, if you, but you you first sort all of all of your comments on a on a document. You copy those doc those, and you pop them into. We, last spring, we popped them into Youth Voices, and then we used some templates to look for the themes. Right this year, um, we we kind of feel like we're making that workflow work a little better, um, and then Chris was doing his synthesis project where your students have read two, three articles at this point, and mm -hmm. they've annotated mm -hmm. those articles. So yep. so I thought, oh, we could go to Chris and Chris, I'm almost done with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Chris could, Chris could have his kids copy their comments on those two or three articles and ask AI to find the themes in, in, in all those comments, mm -hmm. right? Mm. Seem like a nice use of AI, right? Because no teacher has enough time, unless you think you do. That's fine. But a lot of teachers don't have enough time to read all of that stuff that kids are writing about the text. But AI can find some themes. In addition to that, Chris was saying, hey, that's great. But I'm also introducing they say, I say. Let me turn this over to you, Chris. And then we'll get to a thinking partner we built out of this, this conversation. Sure. So in general, I always want my students to do some writing before they start interacting with the AI. And so, um, you know, I'm talking about this book, They Say, I Say, a pretty common text. Um, basically, it is about, you know, you're entering some conversation. It's an academic conversation or, you know, persuasive, argumentative conversation. People have said stuff before. So it's the art of integrating what other people say and then say it instead of just like, here's what I think. So um, I today, um, what I had them do was just some uh, little bit of writing. Yeah, it was just four sentences for a big chunk of the class today. So they rewrote you know, what their research question was. So here's an example from a uh, student today. So she's, her research uh, question is, how can we reduce the level of homelessness in Utah? And so I gave them a little, um, you know, here's what they say, I say is, here's the point of it. And then because they can't have all the fun, I'm, you know, writing along with them. And so uh, my thing is about drought in Utah. I live in a pretty dry place. Um, and so water is a big concern in the West. And so, you know, I talked about how I would integrate what other people have said. You know, here's an example of how an author would integrate the stuff. Um, you know, and I'm talking about MLA formatting too. And then um, I, I said, now it's your turn. You know, use one of these, um, they say, I say templates uh, and try to incorporate the article that you've annotated into this slide, you know, like make it your own, introduce what the author says. That was task number one. And then, you know, like, here's another thing. I was like, look at, here's more templates on how you can talk about what people, you know, what are the standard views? And so again, because they can't have all the fun, um, you know, I did an example of how I might do that. And then it was like, your turn. And so here's her turn about homelessness. Um, so for example, she wrote, many people assume that homelessness should be an easy issue to fix by implementing affordable housing. But according to Michelle Flynn, 
who was you know cited in this article executive director of the road home this is not the case and then quote from her so the student is introducing what they say before they you know get into the crux of their argument um and then the last one you know i just had them do three things and that is introducing an ongoing debate because they're doing a problem solution um paper and so um you know again i did like here's a template and here's my riff on that template about my topic, which was drought. And then it was like, here's what's your turn now. So, um, you know, we're just trying to uh, do that. Now I think I'm going to have them consult AI to compare what AI would produce with, they've already thought about it. They've already wrote about it. And so now I think it's time to use some AI. So that, so By the way, that, that's a very ethical thing you just said there, just to, to note <laughs> that, that, you know, you do it first yourself and then you go to AI. That, um, I don't know if we want yeah, to call in it general, ethical that's, or, or that's a, what good, we do. a good way to teach, right? So lo, let me, um, I, yeah. I'm going to stop sharing. Yeah, okay. And, and I'm going to show you something from Bonnie's students, if I can remember how to share it to. I can, but I'm just talking while I do it. Oh. Didn't want to do that. So while he's doing that, basically, okay, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Can, this, can that be prompted to not only help them integrate um, other writing into their writing, but also can it be used to help them kind of focus? You know, like it'll notice certain themes, also, uh, in in the, that student's annotations. Chris, um, a librarian yeah. I know who does the IB extended essay mm -hmm. it's using they say i say and she has added to it it says mm. for ai mm. okay. as the third you know prompt piece what, 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 what that she said that because i told the students i try not to use um pronoun reference using ai you know it, it, we tend to do that and i I tell them we shouldn't do that because it's not a person. How, Bonnie, how do you tell them to interact with the AI? What do you, what, 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 what's the, what's the mechanics of the sentences you encourage them to use when they, when they I, write to the AI? So we might say AI, we might say the thinking partner, we might say collaborator, um, or, or, you know, it, it depends. It depends really the tone of, mm the specific conversation. Um, but I will say, um, because I even have to change my own language, I want this, you know, and I'm telling the young people that they are the prompt engineers. Um, the thinking partner only can do what you tell it to do. You are the you, but it doesn't know that you're you. <laughs> so that's why it's suggested if you want it to know who you are, you might want to give it a little bit about who you are, what your perspective might be, what you bring to the table so that you can get out of it, it, what it is you think you need. And then you can alter its thinking again, but going in rereading revising sure i'm curious I'm, I'm really curious about the way i mean getting at the pronouns you're talking about mm -hmm. i mean i catch myself all the time when i'm asking these these machines to do things for me i so i just drop into you like i'm telling it something to do mm -hmm. you should do this no you need to do that and i catch myself because i'm talking to it and giving it directions mm -hmm. um and assigning a personality to it just in the choice of the pronoun i'm using and I always feel uncomfortable with that. Yeah. Um, so, you're, you're, you're recommending kids not Why do you feel uncomfortable with it? I'm, yeah, I'm not sure, sure, Paul, because I mean, on the one hand, I feel like there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. At the same time, it does feel like strangely like a slippery slope in some sense, because mm -hmm. I think also this conversation about citing sources and mm -hmm. um, if and this is a related question, if I felt the interface was tracking the feedback better for me and was going to give me as part of my own workflow a way to call out things that i was using so that I was going to be in a very conscious and transparent way pulling things out and being able to cite the stuff so i could see in aggregate what i'm using in my own thinking process and i could see how that 
was derived from my interaction, I think I would feel that much more comfortable saying you because so, but what, there's a kind of osmosis that's happening when I'm just like you, whatever. Oh, where'd I get that? So it, it, this is all blending together. So I, response, maybe, but. maybe you're saying the same thing as I wanted to add though, is which I, I want youth to get away from, you know, Bonnie students to get away, anybody though, to get yeah. away from thinking AI is a thing. Like mm. it is, right. Right, that it's not one thing. And the Moloch and Moloch, um, categories yeah. feel really important to me like uh, young people need to understand if you're talking to a simulator yep. that you're talking in one particular way and being polite to a simulator is not about it, it, there is some research that suggests it does have an imp impact oh, but please. no it <laughs> yes it does it, it honestly does. it does <laughs> really? it not. Yes. Say, please excuse me and thank you Yes. Hey, Bonnie, one of your, here's a funny story about it. Six years ago or more, I was working on this, this uh, digital uh, it's STEM and electronics. Mm -hmm. And there was a woman who was advising me, and she was a big engineering brain in Silicon Valley. And she and her husband had done companies of all kinds, and they were way in front of the AI curve. And she was one of the first people to use an AI assistant as her little assistant, right, for setting up chats and okay. making appointments. And... And I was beginning to, and I was interacting with this thing in email, thinking it was somebody named whatever. And I would go on and on and on. And then, and then, and then she said, David, you're doing great. You're really training my, you're really training my bot. I was like, wow, okay, excellent. So apparently, you know, I think every time you give it feedback, it's digesting that and realizing it was effective I, so or not effective. So I, it does train it, I, absolutely. Okay. Whatever, whatever, and that, the, the other thing is, you wait like if you cursed it out all the time yeah. it, you, you you are you are doing something in your brain that you probably don't want to yeah. bring to the dialogue right mm -hmm. so right. so being appropriate yep. with with ai is is a is an interesting thing to do for yourself i would say okay that, well I'll, I'll try <laughs> So, anyway, that's an but, but if you're using a simulator that's one thing if you're using it to translate text that's another thing, and you would talk differently. If you're using it as a tutor on your writing, that's yet yeah. another way to talk to it. Mm -hmm. I think I think there yeah. there's a rhetoric of the, that youth need. We all need okay. to learn, and it's different for different kinds of AI. Okay. Yeah. Let us show. Can I show this one example? Sure. <laughs> Nadia. So we um. So, is it is on this? My screen is on. Is it not? Yes, it is. I, yes, I know yes, it's hard it to read, but just to show you, um, we created a thinking partner that would read through all of Nadia's. She's reading Traffic Jam, which is an article in the 1619 um, project, uh, short article, but she wrote 18 comments. She copied all 18 comments into mm -hmm. a discussion page on Now Comment. And mm -hmm. then she asked it, she said, what does it look like I'm most interested in? Can you help me write a post on Youth Voices about this article? All right. And we helped her, prompted her. They, mm -hmm. Bonnie can explain that this goes in lots of different directions um, and using different thinking partners. But this one, um, this is the introducing the they say mentor, mm -hmm. right? It comes back and says, hey, reflecting on the themes you seem most interested in, I observe your fascination and resolves around you know, contrasting elements of urban development, the historical contemporary impacts of systematic racism, and a creative narrative framing used to present these issues. Um, it goes on, it, it breaks down each of these and kind of gives some suggestions, quoting from her notes that she put in now comment um, about the, the three themes. And that says, okay, envision a whole room of youth who are gonna be reading this on Youth Voices eager to explore. Here's, here's the they say, I say frames. Mm -hmm. Now go for it. Do the writing, right? So mm -hmm. what, we, what we're trying to do, and you know, it's not perfect yet, but we're trying to get there. We're trying, yeah. Let me say this. I'll say this. I said this last week. I, I like to say this whenever I can. What I think this work is all about is noticing what we could do, in this case as teachers, if we had the time to sit down and read through all of her 18 comments and come up with the themes 
and then give her a very specific assignment to do and mm -hmm. then do that for all 30 students in our room <laughs> and then and then do advisory after that you know, I'm, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I don't know who i'm talking about yeah anyway the um that would be great but the machine can do some stuff and we watch we watch what the machine does we know what we could do if we had the time and then we try to fill in that gap and that's what prompting is all about it's it's bringing the machine up to what we know humans can do mm -hmm. and this is getting close i think it is it is and and the other thing was with this um like it, there's a thinking partner diving deeper i mean it gave one student about 18 to 20 different suggestions on what to do with their writing they were like this is good too what am i supposed to do i said right. okay begin reading and make a choice all you need are two <laughs> to make the choose two on the two that you can approach. So when I talked to Paul, I said, Paul, this is a lot of reading. They're doing, a, they're reading the article, they're writing their notes, they're rereading what they, they've written, you know, and then they have to choose a thinking partner, like, and then they have to read all that and figure out what to do next. I was like, whoa. However, the young people are really doing well with all the switching up of um modalities let's, and let's I, hear, could, could, sorry I, i'd love that you brought that up I, i'd love to hear what rohan and aditya feel about that do you, do you know the problem that miss bentham is bringing up like how many how much text there is to read through i don't know if you were listening sorry <laughs> putting you on the spot you're muted do you want to say muted or do you want to talk uh, yeah, um, I was just, I, I was just quickly, I was doing some stuff on that comment real quick. Yeah. Um, you know, some debate stuff, because I wanted to show you, I was, I wanted to see if we had any time to squeeze that in at the end. Okay, go uh, ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. Um, hey, if anybody has to leave, we get it. Um, <laughs> but I was just looking at, um, from my, from my March debate, we have one of these topics that is like, nobody's been able to come up with anything for it. It's that, uh, for the opposition side to the argument which is that human cloning should be banned on a national level. And so far as a group, we've come up with two arguments as to why it shouldn't be banned, <laughs> which uh, is not exactly great. So what I was doing is I was going in now comment and then you can you see- You want to share uh, a screen? Are you ready to do screen that? Screen but, I'm, uh, but what was the question you were mentioning earlier? Well, uh, I was asking about yeah, asking, yeah. different uh, devices are you on at one time or how many different tabs are you using at one time? Um, especially now that you're using, um, now comment with the thinking partners, youth voices, and then on the side of that during research. Um, and, and what all the adults in the room should know, I have seniors. So when they ask me a question, what does this mean? I tell them, ask Siri, ask Google, ask Alexa in them. That's my answer because there are too many, you know, everybody is walking with a device. But anyway, go ahead, honey, and, and let me know. How uh, do yeah. you, and do you have your cell phone in class? Uh, so in terms of cell phone policies, our school does not permit us to use cell phones. So cell phones must be away by the time the first bell rings and they cannot come out until 2.20 when school ends. Do any teachers allow you to do that and just over overlook the policy? Uh, so... I've, I think once or twice during homeroom, I had to text my parents or something, but so Ms. my language arts teacher did give me an exemption then. And we did use it in for an activity in social studies, but we don't really, like, it's once in a blue moon that you'd actually end up using it outside of the, uh, inside the uh, band hours. And Aditya, of, Aditya, instead of responding to us, I, I do want to give you a chance to ask your question. Do you want to share and jump yeah, in? Yeah, uh, sure, but... And I usually only have three or just real quick. I only have like three or four tabs usually that I'm actually using. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I just like have like 30, 40 tabs are just open in a separate window, which slows down my computer, but uh, kind of just ends up happening. Um, were you, um, just to switch back for a minute, were you sure. asking us to perhaps give you some suggestions about how you might think about human cloning? Because when you started to say that it's very hard to find a certain opinion, what I always do for myself is to say, 
who are the people that are interested in this topic and what might they say from their perspective? Because it is hard to think about um, uh, different sides, especially when you may have some strong feelings about which side you're on. For example, you know, are there medical reasons why, or are there health reasons why, you know, think of other stakeholders in this. Mm -hmm. In the case and, of human uh, cloning, it might be almost everybody on the planet. I'm, yeah. I'm, itching, I'm itching for Aditya to show us what you came up with. <laughs> yeah, so what I wanted to show is, how, is just how I was using AI in this case, mm -hmm. because at first I had come up with five contentions. So what I did is I said human cloning shouldn't be banned. And then, so by the way, I started a new group because the old group was getting really, really chaotic and cluttered. Yep. Um, so Smart I just, yeah. so I created, I already created a thinking partner, which I can show, but uh, first I gave it this, and then I started with this, come up with five contentions. And then it just didn't give me any great contentions. There's like, it gave me stuff about like irrelevant things like stem cell cloning, which are not what we're talking about in this debate. So, I, and then I also wanted to make, and a lot of these wouldn't have been backed up by statistics, wouldn't be really be able to back, be backed up by statistics. And that was a problem I noticed in the last debate where we ended up having a lot of logically based arguments due to AI, but only like about like a quarter of them could actually be supported by statistics. And as a result, we didn't really have too much to talk about. We had a little problem with time. Uh, and we wanted to make sure that we could really flesh out each argument. So I said, come up with five contentions and three of them can be back to statistics. And then mm -hmm. I made sure to uh, say that this does not include stem cell and therapeutic cloning because that's important to our debate. And also this other thing about how it's being a direct one of the subject. And those two are more specific to this debate and which I couldn't include anywhere else really. And the final one is the most important is make sure there's limited overlap between contentions. Because what I've noticed is that AI I know you said specificity was something important with AI, where you want to make sure that instead of saying a few arguments, you want to make sure they say four arguments or three arguments or five arguments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure uh, that's something that I might include. Leah, by the uh, way, by the way, uh, and this is just coming from OpenAI suggestions, bulleted lists. It does good with bulleted lists and it does yeah, good with of, paragraphs. Give me a specific number of paragraphs. Yeah, I've done I, that. I didn't, but, yeah. Yeah. already have it as give me a, a few ideas in a bullet bulleted list and then i might but what i'm thinking of doing is going back in there tweaking in that few to make it like five yeah yeah. yeah yeah good good listen um take statistics I, too from you like you were saying you're not getting any numbers did you put in there to give you the yeah. statistics i told it specifically not to give me numbers but give me like our arguments that are extremely logic based but can be supported by numbers later on because okay. I just want to make sure that the number, because obviously I can't really cite the AI, it doesn't cite its sources too well. Like I might mention, I might mention, uh, oh, according to NHTSA, but it's not going to give you specific URLs or anything that you can really cite too well. And right. it doesn't give too much of a trail as to where it got that number. In many cases, it doesn't really give a trail as to where it got that number from. Yes. And I've seen stories about that. So I want to make sure that I find the numbers myself. Cool, cool. Yeah. Listen, Aditya, um, a, a professor in the Northwest, I forget where, 
created something called a research partner. Um, and I created a thinking partner just copying his stuff. Um, and it does an interesting job. It's not perfect either about facts and so forth, but it's, okay. it's an interesting job. So check out the research teammate. It's called research teammate. And you might be able to duplicate that and then add your spice to that. What about um, consensus? Consensus Sorry. too. There's something out there called consensus. Yeah, yeah. It's way expensive, I gotta tell you though. Oh, it costs money? I didn't yeah. know. Are you kidding? All this stuff this yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But consensus is uh I think there's a three free version because I'm using a free version. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. But we can't all right. But we can't use it globally kids for class. And classes, yeah, yeah. So just saying. Um, consensus. Consensus. So yeah, okay. So thank you for sharing and you know, I I, I hope this has been organized enough um, that we got some ideas out there. It feels okay, like it, uh, it feels like it could take off in different directions. And so, so thank you for coming back each week Rohan, and talking. Okay. But let's let's pull this off tonight. Thank you all. Anybody want to say anything else as we leave? Rohan, did you want to say anything else? I'll give you last voice here. Let's do that. <laughs> Um, not really. <laughs> okay. Let me tell you guys what we're going to be working on in your class, and then we can move on from there. You, you know, you haven't used thinking partners yet in your reading. You're reading a text now. You're reading the introduction and then two parts of thinking like a monk. Yeah. Right. We started um, that today. And, and, right. And so you want to start thinking about what kind of thinking partners are going to help you read that text. Right. So we have some ideas, but we think you'll come up with better ones. So that's kind of the direction we're going to go. So yeah. does that make some sense? Yeah. yeah. I see. Like if I log when I log in, uh, when I'm trying to uh, make a comment, like right next to the comment button is a comment with AI button. Yeah, yeah. So you can just use a thinking partner right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is uh, the first time you guys have used it in reading, so that'll be exciting to see what. Wow. Well, given given your other experience with this stuff, it'll be interesting to see when you bring that experience to reading um, what you're going to do with it. So, I came yeah. up with some very funny uses of AI, too. <laughs> the other day I was trying to play a board game, which is like minimum three players. Uh, but I wanted to play it with two players because like only me and like another friend were available at the time. Only I think it was, it was, it was I don't remember. Uh, only me and another friend were available at the time. We had no third player. So I wanted to see if uh, if uh, now a comment would be able to tweak the rules to make it compatible with two players. Uh, How'd it do? Uh, I haven't gotten a chance to test it out yet because we left okay. before I could test it. But so I, I would, I'm going to make I'm going to make a joke at the end and say that should be part of the, everybody's policy that <laughs> that students <laughs> should be able to come up with new rules for board games. All right, all anyway, right. There is some seriousness behind that. I got it. Yeah. All right, thank yes. you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Okay. Thank you. Night night. Bye. 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 Bye.